And he could never find that thing that said, you know what? I need to live because I have so much to live for. I called my friend and I was like, you know, Janie's dead. It actually got recorded, me getting pulled up on stage. Every every warrant show you ever went to, in between every fucking song you ever heard, people were shouting cherry pie. I think Janie just got to the point that, that you know, he wasn't going to beat it and he knew he wasn't going to beat it. You, you look at the lyrics and, I mean, it, it sounds like somebody who's thinking about committing suicide. But my wife sort of seen the darker Janie that night. If I die here, like, I didn't do anything that I thought I was going to do. I don't think he really grasped how much he meant to so many people. You knew you knew there was problems, but you ne I never, he was only 47 years old. That's the first time I got to see him at a club. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the first time I got to meet Janie. And, and I saw Red comes on and I'm not afraid, like, I just, I start bawling. Hey, hey, welcome to the Hair Metal Guru. My name is Anthony. They call me the Guru, and we have, man, a, a really special episode. Uh, I got my buddy Chris Jones here. We have been chatting on X, and and Chris is a huge fan of Janie Lane and Warrant. So if you followed the channel for a while, you know that that I put out a video, and, and it's probably been six months now, um, titled... Uh, more than cherry pie, my history with Janie Lane of Warrant. And so Jones messaged me after that, and he's like, hey, man, I'm, I'm a huge Warrant fan. And, and you know, he's kind of just telling me, like, hey, you know, it'd be interesting to to share some stories. And I said, hey, what about coming on, coming on the channel? And, you know, let's let other people, because I think one thing that I've, that I've noticed is that there's, there's a huge amount of fans of Janie Lane, of of Warrant, um, out there, and and I think you know since he died so early, a lot of people didn't, you know, it, it's such a tragic story, and so so I think people should tell their their stories about Janie Lane. So Jones, welcome welcome to the Hair Metal Guru Show, and uh, I appreciate you being on here, man. Thank you, my brother. Uh, yeah, it's good to finally meet you. Uh, I know we've talked a lot of back and forth messages and things like that, and. Uh, yeah, when I watched your tribute, it hit me in the face like a ton of bricks. I was just like, I've got to reach out to him, you know, because a lot of your stories, it was like you was telling my story too. Right. So we, we've traded back and forth some messages and uh, yeah, happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So, so, hey, so where, where can people find you on, on X? Like tell people your handle and then anything else that maybe you want to promote. To okay. Like yeah. I mean, I'm on X drummer boy Jones. And while I'm, while we're talking about that, uh, my, my X handle is at hair metal guru, but I just wanted to thank everybody. Um, we're, we're over 1300, uh, subscribers and man, we, you know, the Janie Lane video that I did had over 20,000 views. And, and so just a, a ton of support. I think it's mainly for, I think it's mainly all about Charlie. Charlie. Who's sitting right here, as always. Um, but anyway, so yeah, so the channel's been going great. And right. and so right. yeah, so so we, you know, we're we're here to talk about Janie Lane. So like like how did how did you first get into Warrant and 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 more specifically that they were something different to you than than another band? My dad took me to my first show. On my birthday when I was 15, 7-7 seven, seven of, uh, gosh, is 1987. And it was the Girls, Girls, Girls Tour, Motley Crue. And right. uh, I seen Tommy Lee, and I was like, okay, this is what I've got to do. This yeah. is, you know. So uh, so he bought me a set of drums, a cheap set from a yard sale or something. I can't remember. But uh, he's like, if you'll play them and you play them constantly for a year, um, we, we'll upgrade. Sure. Well, I held him to it, you know, every day, beat, beat, beat. So I, so I, I guess just to jump in crew sort of got me into Tommy Lee. I was a Tommy Lee fanatic. Yep. Well, so in, in turns, you know, I was always watching MTV. I, I seen down boys yep. and I was like, Whoa, hold on a second. You know, this, this is good. This is really good. 
so uh, I, you know, I went and of course bought the cassette and uh, and just fell in love with the cassette. So so I, I thought there's a you know really good band. You know, yeah. I, I was hey man, they're just as good as the Crew, Poison, all the things that was going on at that time. Yep. And uh, so then I didn't really go hardcore until I was at the mall one day and I seen the VHS to Dirty Rotten Filthy Stinking Rich Life. Yeah. And I was like, it's a good band. I'm going to get that. And that changed it all. Okay. Janie's persona on stage, his, you know, how he always related to the crowd and, of course, dropping fuck bombs everywhere. <laughs> this is great, you know. So yeah. that really put it over the top. And then I actually got to see them on that tour opening for uh, the crew. And they they was amazing. They just just blowed me away. And Janie was going on about, and and I've not heard a lot of people say this, and he was going on about they was fixing to get off the tour, going back into the studio, and they was going and they played Uncle Tom's Cabin that night. And they said this will be the first single off of our new record. It's called Uncle Tom's Cabin. And he said the new record is called Vertical Smiles. All right. And I've never heard any, I think maybe I read it in Metal Edge as well, but that name just stuck with me. You know, Vertical Smiles, Uncle Tom's Cabin. I was like, that's going to be awesome. We was, uh, I live in a very small town. And what we do is we ride around town, you know, ride around the square and things like that. Well, we would always go home on Saturday nights at 1030 to catch Headbangers Ball. Yep. And the night that I didn't go, my friend came back up to town about midnight. It was, it was late, and he goes, the new warrant's on. And I was like, oh, man, Uncle Tom's Cabin. I can't wait to go see it. And he goes, it wasn't Uncle Tom's Cabin. I was like, what was it? And he goes, it's called Cherry Pie. And I was like, wow. what's Cherry Pie? And finally caught it. And, of course, you know, at the time, it is what it is. I thought it was awesome. It was great. Yeah. Tongue yep. and cheek. It's everything that the the 80s was, you know. Yep. And uh but that is when, on that record, you can just tell the progression of Janie's lyrics from the first record to the second record. You know, yep. he got a little more deeper, a little more personal. And that's when I really started to listen to more of his lyrics than I actually would listen to the songs. Right. You know, and uh, I think that's 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 a, that's really amazing that. You you were you were one of the first people to hear, um, you know Uncle Tom's Cabin before it before it comes out, and you know like like I mean one of the one of the major turning points in the Warrant story is the album. Well, you heard it being called Vertical Smiles, and I've heard that title before. I remember here, you know, the album was supposed to be called Uncle Tom's Cabin. Well, right. you know, we, we we hear the story later that that they they give the record company the the album, it's done. The record company says, "No, we need a song like Love in an Elevator." So he goes and and writes Cherry Pie. So so when you were waiting to hear the new Warrant, you were waiting to hear the first single as Uncle Tom's Cabin, and that's that's a really interesting perspective because. I didn't come from, I just remember reading about cherry pie. So yeah. that's a, that's a cool perspective that you have. Yeah, Cause it was, you know, you know how live shows are. There's oh, so yeah. much more heavy and, 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 you know, more in your face. And I just remember uncle Tom's cabin was that next step of yep. sort of out of the power pop into just in your face. Right. And so it was a surprise. It was a pleasant surprise. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I, mean, yeah. it, I, I loved it. Um, uh, and, and and back back then, bands it, it was pretty common for bands to play songs from upcoming albums. Well, they don't do that now because everything's recorded and put on the internet, right? But for you know, like you were hearing, you were hearing Uncle Tom's Cabin on the Dirty Rotten Filthy Stinking Rich tour. Well, right. on the Cherry Pie tour, they were playing um, Inside Out. Yeah, from yeah. the Dog Eat Dog album, and that was the opener of yeah, you know, of exactly. that tour. So, so I first got I was kind of like you when I first heard the Dirty Rotten Filthy Stinking Rich album. I even remember I was my cousins owned owned a farm, and so I would 
stay at their place on the weekends. I, you know, I was like 16 or 17. Well, my, my one cousin had, we had to go out and check like some cows or something. And, and I was sitting in the truck waiting for him. And in the cassette deck was dirty, rotten, filthy, sinking rich. And I was like, it's pretty good, you know, and I'm like, it must be yeah. a new band because I didn't right. at my house. We didn't have MTV. Okay. So I only heard what was on local radio and I never heard. So I, re- you know, he comes back in 15 minutes later and I'm like, I'm like, oh, keep playing that cassette. That stuff's really good. So so I get dirty, rotten, filthy, stinking rich. And, and I really like it. But I've always told people like at that in 89, Skid Row was was the band that I really was into I, yeah. I really liked all the other ones but sure. skid row debut album yeah absolutely. But when cherry pie came out and i specific i remember reading in, in like a metal edge um janie lane talking about this song i saw red yeah. and and how it was you know this heartbreaking story well when i was a, a junior in high school i you know my first fell in love with my first real girlfriend Right. You know, in six months, it ends like like all first relationships do. But but I was just devastated, you know. So I'm reading about this. I saw a red song and Janie Lane saying this is the best song I've ever written. And and he's, you know, telling a little bit what it's about. And I'm like, man, I got to hear this. So the day that the 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 album comes out, I, I buy it. I'm, I'm in I'm in my car. And I'm listening and I saw red comes on and I'm not afraid. Like I just, I start bawling. I'm like this, I'm like, this is, is what happened to me. Like here, I think thought I had this, you know, this love, you know, this, this young yeah. love and it, it just ended and you didn't see it coming. Yeah. He was know? talking and directly to you. And, and it feels like your life is shattered. And I was like, Holy shit. Yeah. Like somebody just wrote a song about, about me and that was the first time I really had had that experience. So that's when when Warrant kind of became a different band for yeah. me. And then, you know, like Uncle Tom's Cabin, Mr. Rainmaker. Yeah. I mean, most of the stuff you so I, you know, most people know like I like I taught high school English. So I was always big into lyrics. Yeah. And and his lyrics were so far and above most of the bands that you were hearing and and he was just writing stuff that hit me and you're exactly right and uh how he could like you said i saw red when he goes into that i don't know if you call it a bridge or what but that i've been hurt i've been you know in shame yep. you can feel his anger yes. his pain yes you don't get that with a lot of songwriters or vocalists he he was just amazing that 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 like I said on uh, Cherry Pie, it just turned the corner from being a really good band that I like to this is this is the shit. This is the band. You right. know. So I so I never saw the first time I was supposed to see them on the Cherry Pie tour. Okay. They in fact it was that that tour opened in North Dakota. So I'm in Fargo. Right. It opened in Bismarck, and the next day they played Fargo. Well, I had a job, you know, a summer job. For North Dakota tourism, and we were going on this tour of North. So anyway, I missed it, and I was like, "Oh!" oh. So I didn't see them till the Dog Eat Dog tour. Oh, and it was it was Dog Eat Dog. They played now. They played the Fargo Dome, which holds about twenty thousand, and I think it was Lynch Mob and shit. Well, it wasn't tour tour, was it? Anyway, wow, there's guess, some irony, right? Yeah. Lynch Mob, <laughs> yeah. So, so the doggy dog tour, and I know Lynch Mob was one of the openers. Anyway, this place seats twenty thousand. Now there was there was probably three thousand there. I mean, and and it looked good, you know, because they 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 collapsed it in, so right. it wasn't like we were sitting in in a place for. But when they had played Fargo, I know that you know there was and on the Cherry Pie tour there was ten twelve thousand people there. Yeah. And now on the dog eat dog tour, there's 2,500. Um, wow. So, so it was easy to see like, Oh, oh things are changing. And, and we've, okay. we've, we've beat to death the yeah. Nirvana and, and the grunge thing, yeah. but tell me about like, like 
okay, going cherry pie into into dog eat dog, like like what was you know what were your thoughts when when that album well, came? Just to sort of follow you up, I was lucky in Nashville. They actually opened up for Poison on Cherry Pie, yeah, and, and I seen that. And then it wasn't just a few months later they started the headline, and so I seen though uh, Cherry or I'm sorry, the Cherry Pie tour with Trickster yep. and uh, Firehouse, I believe it was. Yep. And then, of course, you know, love both the shows. And then, me and a bunch of buddies pitched together and got the uh, the pay per view. You know, there was a yep. pay per view yep. during Cherry Pie, so we got that. So I was, you know, all maxed up on warrant really good. And then when Dog Eat Dog come out, I was naturally progressing into getting into a little bit heavier things. Yep. So when it opened up uh, with Machine Gun, I, I, I was blown away. I mean, I was completely, you know, they, you know, and everybody says the same, you know, retrospect or whatever, but. Dog Eat Dog is hands down the best thing they've ever done. Uh, I, I don't think, and I think you guys mentioned this on your video last week when you was talking about the Dog Eat Dog album. I, I think Machine Gun as a leadoff single was a mistake. Oh, agreed. Um, I think they could have, I mean, it it wouldn't have mattered what they done. I thought Andy Warhol should have been the single, but it, it, it probably could have been Yesterday by the Beatles and it wasn't going to do anything because... It was 1992, and basically everybody was fucked. But I, right. I still, you know, I liked the song "Machine Gun." Yeah, but it was it was still too a little bit. Sure, you're so naughty. It was still <laughs> a little bit too reminiscent, you know, yeah. lyrically, of the sex stuff that they were doing before. The... All my bridges are burning. Yes, was a song that I thought could have been a single um the ballads i mean let it rain could have been a single yeah, yeah. i mean quicksand let it quicksand, rain that's what i was trying quicksand and all my bridges are burning oh yeah are, are two songs that that i have really gravitated to on that album like here's one of the things i remember um when that when when dog eat dog first came out so so i i haven't you know I'm pretty open about the fact that that i had a big drinking problem yes. um in in 92 it, it was it wasn't to the, I was still in the, Hey, things I'm probably doing. Okay. Phase, but it was starting to be more of like, man, like I drink kind of a lot. I mean, I was still functioning. I was still right. going to college and things, yeah. but I remember uh, listening to that whole album and, and Im immediately Andy Warhol was right. was the first song that stuck out to me, but I went home and like, I got, just jackhammer drunk by myself which was like the first time i'd ever done that yeah. and just kept replaying dog eat dog over and over again and the only reason i bring that up is because it's 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 kind of the irony that that that's where i was starting to lose control gotcha and that's probably where janie lane was starting to lose control yeah. even yeah. though he was still putting out phenomenal albums and phenomenal live shows. But, you know, when, when you, when you go see videos or, you know, um, like I watch it, like I try to find old interviews and things. And I re remember he's doing an interview promoting the dog eat dog tour and he's drinking and he's saying, Hey, I'm just getting into tour mode. Well, you know, back then it was like, yeah, all right. That's awesome. Yeah. But knowing what happened to him later, you know, yeah. you start to go, geez like like the alcohol was already kind of starting to take over so yeah. so anyway I've, I've made the point that that my downfall progressed with Janie Lane's downfall with each album and by by ultraphobic man I was you know it was starting to get to where I was just getting about ready to drop out of college my girlfriend yeah. was having our daughter um but drinking was no longer becoming a hey i party every now and then um yeah. it was becoming what i do is party yeah and, and so okay. so anyway so now we get into to ultraphobic and man i mean that oh. so i'll say when i first heard it i was like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> My first initial thought was I'll, yeah i agree i'll agree is, is you're copying grunge and you're copying you know whatever 
but the the more the more you get into the lyrics and the more you look at the pro the progression from cherry pie to dog eat dog well then ultraphobic makes more sense to me um yeah. yes and 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 then and now especially when you get years when you get years on and you know what happened to Janie Lane then the darkness of ultraphobic makes perfect sense because yes. that is a dark and and lonely record yes it is absolutely you're exactly right and um i remember we had a rock station in nashville that uh, that was the be all end all in nashville is called wkdf is 103 and they had a smash on friday i think it's friday nights so they had smash or trash yep and they play a song and i remember playing the dj played the song and would not tell nobody who it was. And it was Family Picnic. Yeah. It was a smash. It was a smash. Yep. He told everybody it was warrant and it was never played again. Yep. I was just like, are you fucking serious? You know, I was. And, uh, but yes, you're exactly right on lyrics on that. You know, it was uh, very dark. But now, <laughs> the one of my favorite things that, on the Ultraphobic Tour that's the first time I got to see him in a club. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the first time I got to meet Janie. Yep. Uh, there was a lot of great things with ultraphobic with me. I mean, that was, um, if, if, if you were, if you were a diehard warrant fan and, and I've said, and I've said this before, the ultraphobic tour is when you really like my buddies that they played around Fargo and Minneapolis a ton and you're right. Instead of being in the back of, of a huge concert hall, you're in a club, you're in front, and you're like shaking, you know, slapping hands with, with the band. Now, I'm sure the band was thinking, I wish we were back in a 20,000 seater, and I completely understand that. Yes. But man, we must have saw in 95, 96, 97, I bet I saw Warrant 10 times. I um, agree. In yep. between Minnesota and North Dakota. And yeah. and that's when I you know I got pulled up on stage with the band, that's when awesome. we got in in back in the tour bus when we when I got you know got to hang out backstage, so yeah. that's when and 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 that kind of shit just cemented the fact that even even when things were dark for the band and and they, they're going downhill, they were on fire live. Janie Lane was unbelievable on those tours. He you could he was drinking a lot yeah but he wasn't missing notes he was you know getting crowds riled up the band sounded great so you know um i i i just treasure those years um uh, you, you talked about like meeting meeting so so okay tell tell me about the ultraphobic tour and mm -hmm. and maybe tell me about seeing seeing them in a club and maybe meeting the band. Uh, so yeah, ultraphobic was, uh, <clears throat> we were sitting there, me and a good friend of mine went. And of course, like you said, get down to stage, you're up on the barricade, you know, and, and this, this, and this, and where I just followed everything. I happened to look over to the bar area that was over to the side. And it was, uh, Susan Ashley, I guess, Susan Dixon, Yep. Is Jerry's wife that was on that remote control show or whatever. Yep. Seen her. And I, I, I looked at my friend and I go, right there's my, right there's our ticket. Right. I'll be right back. So I went over to the bar and I just was like, Hey, is there any way you think we could meet the guys after the show? And she goes, well, they'll come out and they'll talk. But she said, yeah, sure. After the show, come over to the corner of the bar and I, I'll take you guys back. Mm -hmm. And, I was just like, holy shit, this is happening, you know? Yeah. Well, after the show, we walked over there. She sure did. She took us backstage. Janie wasn't there. It was just Eric and Jerry. Yep. And I think it was, was was it Bobby that's playing on tour on drums? Bobby, Bobby Borg. Okay. Yeah, Bobby it was Borg Jerry and, Jerry and Bobby. And so I, I talked to them for just a little bit. And all of them were super nice guys. I, we come back out. Janie was coming out of the bathroom and we just walked up to him and he goes, I just got to go backstage for a few minutes. He said, hang here at the corner of the bar. I'll be right back. 
And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, sure. Yep. He was just like clockwork. He yep. come back. He bought me and my friends drinks. I bet we sit there for over an hour. Really? And I'm a big dolphin. I'm a football guy. I'm a big Miami dolphin fan. I always wore a dolphin hat yep. and he, and my buddy was a Cowboys fan. He had a Cowboys hat on. Well, Janie, you know, is from Cleveland. He is a big Browns fan. Yep. So we sit there and talk football for over an hour yep. and he, he bought us drinks the whole, for that hour. Yeah. We, wow. and, and just as cordial as sweet, as nice of a guy you could possibly meet. The first, so I, the first time I saw there, the first time I met the band was they played, um, it was, it was the bar next to a strip club in Bismarck, North Dakota on the ultraphobic tour. And, um, so after, after the show, uh, like, I know, I mean, this is a different time. So Eric, like Eric Turner is kind of working the merch booth. Really? And he's actually kind of so I'm chatting with him and I'm you know and I'm just like you know just whatever I can do to hang out and talk to somebody from Warren. Well, here comes here comes Janie and and I had just gotten so I have I have I saw red tattooed yeah. and then I have uh stronger now tattooed and yeah. and so I'm like I gotta show him this so I so I should and he's like you know I mean that's that and I was always like that's my ticket because. Yeah. Cause he Absolutely. was really into that. So, um, so then, you know, my, my daughter had just been born. She was born in 96 and he had just had Taylor back then. So then he's yeah. taking off his shirt and he's showing me his Taylor tattoo and we're talking about kids. And so I'm yeah. like, oh, I, I got to buy him a drink. So I, I used to drink like whiskey Coke and yeah. so I buy him a whiskey Coke and he's like, Oh man, that's too sweet for me, but I'll do a shot of Cuervo with you. <laughs> so anyway, we, we ended up doing a shot, a couple shots of Cuervo. And, and, you know, that was about it. It's not like, I mean, there were tons of people there trying to get his time, which I understood I wasn't going to try to be. But just the fact that even then he, they would come out into a bar and, and, and you know, and have drinks with their fans. Most That's... fans weren't doing that. No, absolutely not. You're exactly right. Most and... fans would get, you know, get done and get on the bus and leave and to do that even when your band is still not like really famous but to come out and genuinely appreciate the people who bought a ticket and sit there and not pretend to be interested in you but actually you know i mean maybe they were pretending but yeah you know, i didn't know it i That's mean it right. seemed like hey like i really do want to sit here and and listen to you and yeah. and that was you know, I've met a lot of bands, especially in those years when they started to play clubs, and no one did that like Warrant did. You're exactly right, yes, sir. You're it, it, exactly right. They, you know, they was they was pulling people out, you know, and emptying the club. And Janie is like, "No, these two guys are with me." You know, right? And I was just like, "Holy shit!" Here's my hero just saying, "He's yeah. with me," you know, and. And, and yeah, nobody does that anymore. And like I said, I've, especially at that, during that time, because they was used to playing stadiums sure. a couple of years later. And now they're, they're pissed off because they're in clubs. Uh, yeah. They, Janie never did come across. It's like that to me, or he didn't act like that. It never got bigger than their fans. Like, like, Oh, we're above hanging out with you. Yeah. That, that was never the case. All right. So, uh, so anyway, so so I met him in Bismarck, and then and then um, I had a couple of buddies that were that that were living in Minneapolis. So and and I'm starting to kind of get the ultraphobic. Ultraphobic was '95. Belly to Belly came in in '96. So to me, those kind of run together because yeah. it, that seemed like the touring never stopped. But, yeah. um, so some of these shows might be on the Belly to Belly tour, but. I, I shared it in my Janie Lane video and I'll probably put it in here again. It actually got recorded me getting pulled up on stage. Folks, what that does to you, you write a fucking song, next thing you know, you see it on somebody's fucking arm. That means the fucking world to each other. Thank you very much. 
Okay. With the yeah. band. Yeah, that's amazing. And and that happened a couple times. And it was we would all like I had four or five buddies that would go to all these shows and and one of them has an a, a tattoo that says ultraphobic. And then I had a tattoo that said stronger now. So we were all it and I'm sure it got annoying as shit. But we were <laughs> always like Genie, look, look, you yeah. know, and and then and then when you know there was a couple times where he saw it and he's like, get up, you know, get up here and 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 show that and talk about it, and then and then you know you can see in the video he's like, go off to the side of the stage, we're gonna get you fucked up. Well, they did because Eric Turner was drinking uh, straight tequila wow. in a little paper cup and he kept like feeding me tequila well i ended up wasted by the end of the night so i barely remember it but anyway yeah um, there were multiple times on the on the and and i pointed this out but bobby borg on drums was such a fucking nice guy he was he was one who would be like we would hang out by the tour bus after the show and he'd be like come on the bus and and sit and, and let's have a beer and he would just sit so um, but anyway, there was a time where, you know, Bobby Borg invites us on the bus. The rest of the band comes up, comes up there and they're waiting to leave. And I'm sitting in the back lounge between Janie Lane and Jerry Dixon. And, and some of the guys are playing like video games and there, and Janie Lane goes, all right, well, you know, we're getting ready to go to Wisconsin. Are you coming to Wisconsin with us? And like, I'm sure he didn't mean it. I mean, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm sure he's like, are, are you, you know, like, yeah. but I'm like, holy fuck, that would be that, the greatest story ever. ever. I'm like, obviously, and and again, I'm sure he didn't mean it, but um, the, you know, I treasure those memories and, yeah. and I'm sure to the band, it was, you know, I'm sure that kind of shit happened all the time. Everywhere they played, they wanted, they wanted people, you know, to feel like, like they, they were, they were special, but they had that way of doing that and and you know That's... but I, I will i will say that like i said the you you alcohol be, was becoming a bigger part of the show yeah. it's still i don't ever remember a show on, in those years where i thought man he's fucked up he's yeah. he's not playing he's not singing well he never missed notes he was yeah. still on and and shit Back then, when I was boozing myself, I loved it. I'm like, yeah, look, he's partying. It's awesome. Yeah. You know, it wasn't till till later when I started to get into trouble myself when I go, oh shit, he was he was in trouble. He was in trouble. That's right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, same here. I mean, we would we would get hammered, and it was like, yeah, we're drunk with Janie, and you know, and it's so weird because your stories parallel exactly my stories you know because right. i'm sort of out of nashville and so we was at nashville and the next night they was in louisville kentucky and we was like three hour drive we'll see you tomorrow night drove to louisville and then you know hung out with them after that show and then the next night they was in lexington we just followed them we was yeah. like okay let's go you right. know so we'd go to and we went to paducah and we got to where it was, you know, there for a while, you know, just sort of on a first name basis. Hey, there's Chris, sure. or you know, there's you know, and uh, sure, but you know, I wouldn't consider them friends by no, no. means. But but but, uh, but yeah, it was same thing. It was just it was a very good time. I, I don't think it, well, I only seen them once on Ultraphobic, but I think on Belly to Belly and Greatest Hits, the the greatest and latest, yeah, all of that starts getting fuzzy to me me and my wife got married and we went to memphis to yep. see them we seen them in nashville and then the next weekend we went to memphis and that's where sort of like you were saying i i got to the point that i was in trouble and i actually missed the show i had drunk so much that i actually got drunk and passed out and they did uh, I got went to the car and I actually missed the show. Oh my god! And, and I've Janie has never been rude or anything to me, but my wife sort of seen the darker Janie that night. 
but she was telling me that she run into him backstage and and my wife i guess had walked in to the dressing room where they was at because they was letting us just pretty much go wherever we wanted yeah. you know right and she said that he was pretty obnoxious far as get out of my fucking dressing room you know that kind of thing and and but my wife didn't you know she didn't really think that much about it you know right. she's she still holds Janie in high regard as me. Speak. I, I just wanted to. So we we we've mentioned ultraphobic to belly to belly. Now I I like. There are some songs on belly to belly that I really like, but there, yes. that's to me that's when at least songwriting wise, I mean some of these. So I pulled up. Um, in the end, uh, yeah. room with the view. Room with uh, the view is yes feels feels good feeling this i mean those those you, you look at the lyrics and i mean it it sounds like somebody who's thinking about committing suicide it, it, you're right yes sir right? it does it does and and so again this belly to belly comes out in 96 well by then i had dropped out of college i started working full time as a bartender so i you know spent a lot more time drinking yeah. in those years. So so I, you know, that's what that's when I noticed I, I started to turn from hey, fun party guy to quiet, just let me sit and drink guy. Yeah. And and more apt to get pissed off by the end of the night. More apt to wake up and and be like, fuck, what you know, what did I do? I mean I that's when the yeah. blackouts starting started 96 97 98 and so i i never did see him bad uh or or like rude or anything but right. yeah I'll, I'll also point out it's not like i got to hang out with them every time i saw a show right you know, exactly. there were three or four times yeah and all the times that i saw him where i got lucky enough to be pulled backstage i got on the tour bus either two or three times you know, so I don't want people thinking, oh, that guy was like special and got, right. all, you know, if I was, if I was lucky enough to where he saw my tattoo at a show, I might get acknowledged. And, but a lot of times, like I said, it was Bobby Borg who was saying, hey, come on to the bus. Now, when I would get there, Janie would be awesome and he would be yeah. really cool, but he yeah. wasn't the kind of guy who was like, hey, come on, hang out with us. He would just come out and hang out with fans. Yeah. But anyway, um, I do remember now when after Warrant fine broke up for the first time mm -hmm. and um, Janie started doing solo shows, uh, they played in Fargo and, and I was not at this show, but I had a buddy who was, you know, kind of like us, huge Warrant fan. So this was not at even a real rock club. This was kind of a... I don't want to say shitty, but more, it was kind of a biker bar. It was a place for local bands to play, mm -hmm. not a place where you would expect to see Janie Lane. Yeah. So I saw Enough's Enough at this club once, and right. you know, there's like 75 people there. Right. So anyway, this this guy, well, he worked at a radio station back then. So he got on the tour bus after the show and he said Janie Lane was fucked up. And he said, he said he was kind of, you know, started just blabbing about like, you know, yeah, you know, I do the show. I, and he said this exactly, and I'll never forget it. I drink until about 9 a.m. I sleep all day. I get up, I start again until the show. And when he told, that was the first time that I was like, you know, I just assumed that, yeah, hey, bands party on tour, but I didn't know how bad it would get. You know, I mean, yeah. this is a long time ago. So when he told me that, I was like, I was like, come on, like, really? Yeah. He goes, well, that's what he said. I mean, you know, you can't, but that's when I, I was like, holy shit. Yeah. That's, yeah. Not... That's, that's your exact, I mean, you started seeing, you know, I used to, uh, <laughs> Every, as soon as I'd get to work, of course, I'd log in and I, before I'd get started at work, you know, I'd go to the, the metal sludge gossip boards and, yeah. you know, of course that was, you know, you know, Janie was 
you know, Stevie ran him through the ringer there for a while. They crucified him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was always something Janie was drunk or Janie was, you yeah. know, didn't make this show. And I, I've read interviews like I think with one of it's, I think he's, uh, Stephen Piercy's guitar player now. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name, but he has a podcast with another guy. And uh, he was talking about how they had done some shows during that. Johnny tour. Monaco? No, it's not Johnny. It's the other guy with the short hair. Uh, okay. He's got a mohawk type deal. Okay. Um, but uh, he was talking about how big of a dick Janie was and how he was always drunk. And, you know, and I was just like, man, you know, you started seeing cracks. And I, my timeline start. You know, I, I don't know if this was after 2008 or before 2008 right. when they got yeah. back together, but that was the last time I seen him was in 08. Their first show of the reunion was at the Wild Horse in Nashville. And man, you talking about amazing. Yeah. Jeannie was money. He looked good. Yep. So I guess this was after all of that stuff because yep. he got to where he is looking pretty bad. He gained yep. a lot of weight. You know, I yep. can't say that I'm a big guy, but you know, he gained a lot of weight. He had a mohawk at one time and all of the stuff, but man, he was amazing. And the band was amazing. And I saw and, that, that, Oh, sorry to interrupt. No, I, no. I, I saw that Oh eight tour. And I think I saw the third show. It was it was in Minnesota. It was at it was at um, a, a casino, and it, and it it was phenomenal. And there was a lot of people there. Yeah, um, I I remarked, and I think I I said this in my Janie Lane video, but you know, he said, "Hey, we're only gonna play the stuff you know and love." They only played stuff from the three first three albums, and I I just remember think, well, that's kind of you know that's kind of sad that that like now they're officially just a uh, a nostalgia act anyway they they were great but that tour fell apart on about show five or six yeah and and so I, I actually was was wanting to to get into that because and I will put some clips in there but yeah. I know I think the fifth show of that 2008 reunion was Las Vegas and it was a disaster <laughs> Go ahead. Well, this time that I saw you, I could not speak a word. My tongue was tied and giant now. I feel so disturbed. And there's YouTube, and I'll and I'll put some clips and I'll put some pictures. Yeah. But Janie is horrible. He's wearing a baseball hat. <laughs> You know, he doesn't look like you can see the band is just trying to fucking not not lose it on him because he's 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 bad. But I took some screenshots and there are some close up pictures where he just looks gone. Yeah, he he doesn't like like he he maybe he's he's probably in a blackout. Yeah. And because I used to blackout. I used to, you know, I'd be, I'd remember, hey, about 11 o'clock. And then there would be hours where I would, and people would be like, dude, like you okay? Like the next day. And I'd be like, fuck, what did I do? So, <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it, it, it's it is so sad. Those that, and there, I think there was two, there was one, at least like, I think two shows. Yeah. And then that's when the band went and played Rocklahoma. Apparently that one went okay. I don't know if there's video of that, but then yeah. that's where, you know, Joey Allen and Eric Turner have said they started to go, you know what? It ain't going to work. Yeah. Just, it's just not worth it. I mean, you know, I, I've told some friends of mine uh, that's had problems and, and, you know, you, you, I will help anybody to the point that they quit helping themselves. And I think that's, yeah. you know, uh, I think Janie just got to the point that, that, you know, he wasn't going to beat it and he knew he wasn't going to beat it. Uh, you know, I, it's pure speculation, sure. uh, but uh, it's just a shame 
because I really don't think he, maybe he did, but I don't think he really grasped how much he meant to so many people. Oh, sure. You know, I, I think, sure. you know, I know towards the end, he was like, he was just joking about cherry pie that, you know, and all that, but I still think that cut him deep, you know, it, and, uh, Oh yeah. But who wouldn't have done that? You know, he wrote the song, what, in 10 minutes on a pizza box and it become the biggest strip song and everything else of the eighties. Who the fuck wouldn't have done that? Yeah. And if they say they wouldn't, they're lying. Uh, I just think he was one of the scapegoats. Uh, and that's, that's really sad because I mean, I love the eighties, love the hair bands, but there was a lot more bands that could have been the scapegoats a lot more than he was. There's that video. And I, and uh, so where he, where he, where he talks about, and you can tell he's drunk, he's, he's got a cup and he says, I could shoot myself in the head for right. And that's all. No. I shared that, I've shared that in some warrant stuff that I did in my Janie Lane video. And some people said, well, well, he came out and said that he didn't mean that. And I'm like, yeah, he said that because he has to play that song live. Yeah. Okay, but d does anybody really think that if he could go back, if he could have gone back in time and not, I think he would have x that song out yeah. so fast because I just, every every warrant show you ever went to in between every fucking song you ever heard people were shouting cherry pie i yeah. got so sick of it yeah you know I, and and me and my buddies would be like shouting out songs from ultraphobic because you know we wanted him to be like oh somebody's yeah. here for what yeah. i'm doing now that's right Not yes what i was and, and so i'd be like fuck shut up they're gonna play it it's yeah. going to be at the end yeah and yeah so I, I really you know i loved that song when it came out but even now i it, it's hard for me to listen to that song because if i, I skip uh, one yeah if i skip one that's the one i skip i so okay so now okay and 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 i think this that's a good transition because because we got into 08 well janie lane dies august 11th of of it was August 11th. I think it was August yeah. 11th of 2011. Right. And amazingly, uh, the next day, Warrant was playing North Dakota with Skid Row. <clears throat> and, a, and a buddy of mine, you know, well, had texted me and he's like, hey, are you online? And I'm like, no. And he's like, Lane died. And, and this is, you know, a buddy of mine who was, you know, big in, into Warrant. And I was... Right. I was just floored. I was just, I was, what? Yeah. Like you, you never, I mean, you knew, you knew there was problems, but you never, I never, he was only 47 years old. You, you were saying that, that he, he was, he was gone and, and he wasn't going to help himself. And he kind of knew you were, yeah. you were talking about that. Well, you know, I was, so at my worst in January of 2002, um, I, I was basically gone. Like I would wake up in the morning after a blackout. And I remember this happening a couple of times. And I used to like write lyrics when I'd just be blitzed. And I woke up one time with a notebook by me on the couch and it said, help me. And I didn't remember writing that, but I just remember going, what the fuck, man? Oh. But I would just try to hide it from everybody. Yeah. You know, pretend everything is okay. Well, you know, in, in January of, of, of 2003 I ended up getting deployed to Iraq right. and for whatever reason <clears throat> that was the thing you know me going hey you know what if I die here like I didn't do anything that I thought I was going to do yeah. like I'm really disappointed in how my life turned out right. and, and so it you know I quit drinking when I got home and 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 went back to college got a teaching degree and all that I wonder Janie Lane had all these fans, had all these accomplishments, and he could never find that thing that said, you know what? I need to live because I have so much to live for. Yeah. And yeah. and and that kind of breaks my heart because they're, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm fanboying it. I don't, you know, I'm 51 oh. years old, but I still look at Janie Lane like, man, 
That guy could have been writing songs for people, producing. He could be yeah. writing ballads for country artists. There was, you yeah. know, he still could have had this long career and and he died alone in a hotel room in a cheap hotel in California. Yeah, with, you know, with a note in his pocket because he wouldn't carry ID or whatever, you know. But you're yeah. exactly right. I just, uh, you know, addiction is a... Uh, is a is a tricky mean thing you know it's uh some people can beat it some people can't you know and and janie couldn't and that's sad because like you said he with his songwriting and his you know there used to be a page and you've probably seen it there used to be a page online it's not there anymore it's called laney jane music yeah it had all of his demos and all of these songs I would go there and spend hours just listening yeah. to stuff I'd not heard. Yeah. And I mean, look at Butch Walker for, for yeah. a prime example, you know, Butch Both is like one of and marvelous the, three. Yeah. And huge fan, by the way, I love, yep. I love Marvel three. I love Butch. I love South gang. Uh, but Janie could have been that easily and his stuff. I know we, we glossed over a lot, you know, yep. going back like Jabberwocky. Yeah. Those songs on Jabberwocky was absolutely amazing and uh, stripped down. The lyrics was amazing, you know, and I, I know you'd mentioned, you know, it won't never get a release because of, I, I don't think because there's just too much the, with the family and how do you say his name, Obi or Abby? It doesn't, the, the, his manager. I think it's Abby, but Abby Steinman. Yeah. And, yeah. There's too much bad blood there. I know they sold his catalog. It went somewhere and there was a lawsuit between the families and this, that, I, I, you know, it's a shame because I don't think his stuff will ever see the light of day, you know, and even his, what was a uh, uh, back down to one. Yep. Eh, it had its moments. I mean, lyrically it was okay, but I think it was a little more, I don't know. It was okay. I, I listened yeah. to it. I'm not a, yeah. Uh, I'm not one of these thing persons that think everything that Janie no, Blaine no. was fantastic. Uh, but he, but yeah, he was on that album. Was. He was on that album, Saints of the Underground. Yeah, Bobby Blotzer. But I mean, in in little bits that I've heard from Bobby Blotzer, there was a lot of times where he was not capable of functioning. Yeah, in the studio, so they had to, you know, okay, we can't record today because you're too wasted. Yeah, and. You know, if if that's the way it was, and you look at how dark Belly to Belly was, and that came out in 96, can yeah. you imagine how dark shit was when he was at his worst in the mid-2000s? Yeah. Now, there were periods of sobriety. He sounded mm -hmm. great when he was with Great White. Oh, amazing. Yes, right? he did. Yeah. Um, and and occasional solo, you know, and so if, if, you've, if you've investigated, you would hear that, man, you know, he would... He would get a DUI, something bad would happen. He'd get sober for a while, but yeah. he could never, never keep it going. And and that led to August 11th, 2011. Where were, yeah. like, where were you? Or like, do you remember first hearing the news? Like, I, I, yeah, and, I do. I, uh, it was, it was later that day. It might've been the 12th, but I think it right. was the 11th. Right. Uh, like I said, I'd get into work. First thing I'd do, I'd log on the computer Go to Metal Sludge, Janie yep. Lane did. And when I seen it, like you said, I mean, it was a kick in the face, but you was almost like, well, I sort of seen this yep. coming, but yep. you, it was still a massive shock. And the first thing I've done is like your buddy did. I called my friend. I was like, you know, Janie's dead. You know, yep. he's gone. Yep. And, uh, you know, spent the, <laughs> what, the next 12, 13 years listening to him and uh, remembering him yep. and, the, he is the only person that I listen to still. I'm not going to say a daily basis, but I would say probably a weekly basis. Right. Uh, uh, you know, I, I'll go months, you know, two or three weeks or whatever without listening to the crew or, or whoever. But Janie, nah, if you had a hard day, I can put it in and it's yep. great. And, uh, yep. Yeah. You, you know what, what I've realized is, uh, I still love cherry pie and, and I love Charlie. I still love cherry pie and I love dirty, rotten, filthy, stinking rich. But when I play warrant these days, 
it's usually dog eat dog and ultraphobic. And, you know, to me that, and, and I hear that from a lot of people, you know, even yeah. though, I mean, dog eat dog went gold, ultraphobic didn't, I mean, didn't do shit, but the diehard fans, but you will hear many diehard fans say they prefer those two. Char- <laughs> yeah. That's you on camera. You're very naughty and they're very famous. Everybody loves you. Everybody loves Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. Everybody Good loves puppy. You. Um, but diehards, diehard warrant fans love ultraphobic, love dog eat dog. And and I think that's just a tribute to they grew up with Janie Lane like we grew up with Janie Lane. Fairweather fans stopped after Cherry Pie yep. and 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 other people that were serious about it saw that man, there is something deeper going on on these albums. Yeah. And uh, those songs still, still like resonate with me and they bring me back to a time and, and, you know, it was a special time for music. It was. And like you said, it, it takes you back to the time, but on the flip side, to me, it sounds just as fresh today as it did then. Yeah. It doesn't sound dated. It doesn't sound, right. you know, and, um, uh, yeah, I mean he he'll always be missed, and I and I hope I'm wrong. I hope that you know Jabberwocky gets a release, and you yeah. know there's one song, and I, I you know I know you've heard it, but it's on YouTube. It's called Saltwater. Yep. Yeah. So Daddy took me by the hand, dragged me down the sand. You know, don't let me drown. And that I mean I just saying that I'm getting chill bumps. You know, it's he had so much to offer and so much that people didn't get to hear and. uh yeah. Maybe it'll change, but you know. Hey man, um, it was it's been awesome chatting with you about about Janie Lane. Um, if if anything, you know, I hope that people watch this video and 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 maybe remember their own experiences. I hope that they go back out and and check out the Warrant catalog. Maybe if they were a casual fan, I implore you go listen to Dog Eat Dog. Go listen to Ultraphobic. And and even there are special moments on on belly to belly. So you know, Janie Lane is it. It's a tragic story, an incredible rise, and and just a tragic fall. But man, I mean, the guy, no doubt, is one of the most talented musicians to come out of. Well, maybe not only the hair metal scene, but but the music scene. And um, you know, it it's sad we never got more from him, but. To be able to sit here with you and, and and share these stories is is just you know it, like we have never met before today we have That's chatted, right. but knowing that that you and I both have this 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 bond in Warrant and Janie Lane is 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 awesome so I, yeah. I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story about Janie Lane I appreciate it I really do and uh, thank you for inviting me and it's been a pleasure to finally meet you face to face and. Uh, Hope we can continue on. And anytime you want to talk, I, uh, any of the other things, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to jump on and uh, talk to you guys. And I'm going to keep watching your videos as well and chat with you on Twitter. And uh, Thank you for your service, by the way. It's, hey, uh, it's, it's, hey, Chris Jones, thanks a lot for being here. Everybody out there watching in uh, YouTube land, thank you very much. I would love it if you, if you hit the like button, if you subscribe, Charlie says, if you don't subscribe, I'm going to get it. So until we come out with a new video next week, take care.